Hello and welcome to another quick video and today I'm going to be showing you the new black and white toning Photoshop panel. I've already gone ahead and installed the panel. If you're not familiar with installing these Photoshop plugins, I will leave a description to a video I did previously in the link below. Now that the plugin is installed, it's time to bring it into the Photoshop interface and there's a couple of ways that we can do that. We can go to the plugins menu inside of Photoshop. We can choose the plugins panel, which will show all the installed plugins that you have, or you can simply choose it from one of the lists below. So this is the BW toning. Let's bring that into Photoshop. It's a very small lightweight plugin and it offers eight individual color tone presets. We've got brown, cool, Cooler, Cold, Platinum, Sepia, Selenium and FMS. They're all pretty self-explanatory, apart from the FMS, which I'll describe in a moment. Beneath the presets we have a Strength slider, and this will reduce the overall opacity of that layer, so it's effectively reducing the strength of that tone. Each preset will create its own individual layer. We'll demonstrate that now. Let's choose the colder. But before we do that, I want to just bring your attention to what it says in the bottom left hand corner. Notice that this image is in the grey gamma space and that's not going to allow us to apply a tone because to apply a tone to an image, the image has to be in an RGB colour space. If we did try to select a tone, we would get a warning message telling us that it needs to be in RGB colour mode. So let's go ahead and convert this to RGB, which we do by going to Image, Mode and selecting RGB colour. Now that's done, we can now apply the tone. So let's go ahead and apply the cold tone. And if we look at the layers panel on the right hand side, we can see that we now have a new layer called Cold Tone. If we choose to supply another preset, let's go for Cooler, then this will create its own layer. It will not delete the previous layer. So you can have multiple of these stacked and then choose from the one that you want to be active. So let's delete that one. The strength slider, as I mentioned before, by reducing this, it changes the opacity percentage and it's effectively reducing the effect of that tone. Zero being, it's not being applied at all. A hundred means that it's got a hundred percent of that effect applied. So the panel is pretty straightforward. I want to bring your attention to this FMS. So what is the FMS preset? Well, FMS stands for Frank Meadow Sutcliffe. And for those that are not familiar with who he is or who he was, he was quite a renowned photographer back in the late 1890s into the early 1900s. And he was a photographer based in Whitby, North Yorkshire, which is a coastal town. And the image that we're looking at on screen is a photograph that I made on 5x4 film of Whitby in North Yorkshire. So this was more or less the hometown of where Frank Meadow Sutcliffe performed most of his photographs. And he used to photograph people working along the, along the harbour side, the fishermen and people like that. So if you've not heard of Frank Meadow Sutcliffe, he is quite well documented on the internet. And one thing about his images is that it seems to prevail a certain tone to them. So let's have a look at one of his photographs that I took from a book I have that contains quite a few of his images. So this is a typical Frank Sutcliffe Meadow tone, and you'll see this in quite a lot of his images. It's quite a strong tone. It's a tone that seems to appeal to me 
I just like the tone. And it's one that I've always wanted to try and reproduce in Photoshop, but could never seem to get the balance right. So while making this black and white toning panel, I decided to have another go and for, for a bit of fun really, and see if we can get this Frank Meadow Sutcliffe tone into the panel. What I've done, I've taken this image and I've duplicated it and I've simply desaturated it. So I've got a blank canvas and I'm trying to just demonstrate what this tone preset does and then you can judge to how close it is to the original. It's not going to be exact, but it's pretty close straight out of the gate. So let's start by applying the FMS tone to this neutral image. And that's the tone straight out of the panel. So that's my tone and that's the original. Not 100% the same, but it's not far off and it's a good starting point. One thing you will notice that when you use the FMS tone, unlike the other presets, it creates a group. And inside that group, we have the tone and we have this hue saturation adjustment layer. And the reason for this layer is that it allows you to try and fine tune or tweak this preset. Personally, I find that it might be a little bit too much on the red side. You'll notice that with the Frank Meadow Sutcliffe tones, it does contain a lot of red. So I'm going to open up the hue saturation. From the master, I'm simply going to choose the reds. And I'm just going to dial back the red saturation to around about minus 30, something like that. And then if we look at his tone to my tone, it's sort of coming more or less into the right area now. So let me just disable this hue saturation. So that was without it, and that was with it. It's a very subtle change, but it is enough just to bring down that value of the reds. Now, obviously, this particular tone is not going to be suited for all images, but if you do like the overall look and feel of his tone, then certainly give it a go, because you can actually get some quite nice feeling from the image, especially if you use the hue saturation and come into the red channel and then just play about with mainly the red slider because I feel that the the tone itself does contain a lot of red. That's bringing it down to minus 45 and that's the original and that's this one. So I think it's pretty pretty close to the original one. So that's what the FMS one does which is the Frank Meadow Sutcliffe. And that more or less wraps up this small panel, the black and white toning. So if it's a panel that you think that you could use, it is now available from the website. And again, I'll put a link to that straight in the description below the video. Until next time, thank you for watching. Bye for now.